Hi, welcome to class three, Service and Manufacturing Cultures, part of the Servitization module. So I want to understand today, why is culture important for service? I've already given you some indications why I think it is important. To be able to use the Mathieu model, very, very useful in actually helping us understand, identify what good service cultures look like, and to be able to change the technical bias of manufacturing firms to become more service friendly. So by the end of this, you'll be able to describe the cultures, differences between service and manufacturing firms and be able to move them from A to B. So again, part three, um, service, cultures and manufacturing, the first part we are now in and uh, really beginning to close out on uh, the first section of the teaching. Watch the video. Um, there's a long video on this on YouTube and I really recommend that you watch it. Really, really useful as an input. Going to ask you always, what do you already know? Time to share it. So, why is culture important? Service cultures are different. Why is that? Mathieu Herman, Kotler, Norbert and others have said it's much more humanistic, it's emotional. Mostly service with a little bit of goods, a little bit of material. Um, we can't store it. Um, we're supporting the customer. Often it's customer-based innovation, not technical-based innovation. Technology side, technocratic, not people. We must always have the facts. We separate production and delivery as opposed to having it together. It's mostly tangible goods, a little bit of services. We have to deliver it. Services seen purely as a cost rather than something that creates value. And manufacturing firms tend to like complicated structures. Not really the best structure um, to have them. It's all about interactions between people. Therefore, service really is a cultural aspect and we have to manage that. So I don't want to see robots. I don't want to reprogram robots. I want people to do things, people to perform. I want this guy. Haskett and Schlingster said, this is a really good way to actually view the world. Service of the world is about putting your people first, understanding how they work. This guy can sell a lot more than the robot. Sometimes I want the robot. Go to the local supermarket and see the self-serve tills and see the cashier at the desk. They both perform a different service. Sometimes they're both right. This is a great picture that I picked up from GE. Um, it shows a service job being done. So what's the difference between that and the second picture? Well, the first picture clearly has an old guy, hint, lots of experience, carefully putting the rotor together, very carefully caring about your equipment. Whereas the second one, the first thing that hits me is the J920. I really don't know what the J920 is. I'm assuming it's their new latest product. And it's green, but it's just a picture of it, yeah? It's like looking at pictures of cars. Um, doesn't really explain to me how it gets my job done. The other guy, I can imagine how that works, whereas this one takes more, even more imagination. Think about that as you see um, brochures and websites from firms. Mathieu model. Um, she did a great job with this simple 3x3 three three matrix. Get some references. Really good. I really recommend that you go and have a look at it. She's written some great stuff there um, 15 years ago. So we can use this for benchmarking. Tactical. The organization does services because well, somebody else has has to do it, so it's kind of just has to happen. Um, strategic, we do services because the boss said cultural, we do services because, well, why wouldn't we do services? That's where I like to think of the organizational intensity. Tactical, you drag screaming into service. Culture, well, I can't think of not delivering services. Customer service, very basic stuff. Product services, we're keeping the equipment functioning, we're focusing on the function. Service of a product, really then looking at very outcome based things. We're looking at how you're operating and helping you to make more money. So we've put a bunch of different companies in there. 
you could put other companies. We could argue whether it's in quite the right place, but I think we could all agree they're in pretty much the right place. Think about how they work. What's important there? A move from one box to the next box has benefits, but it brings risks with it. So we have to move, particularly if we're only tactical and customer services, cultural services or product. Do we really need to move that far? Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, I always think that moving to the cultural side is actually very good. Um, moving downwards in the service specificity, I think it's really up to you, your market, and how your business works. Strategic and financial benefits, marketing benefits too. This is not just about marketing though. We change behaviors. We get close to our customer. We get more income. But it can be hard. There's also the culture within the organization where you sit. Different people view it differently and different people accept innovation differently. A lot of service innovation is based around cash flows. How you manage those, how you change the revenue streams. That can have other knock-on effects in other places. You may feel that your engineers say, oh, you're now ripping them off, you're selling them services they don't need. Well, if the customer's buying them, they probably do need the services, and you probably haven't had a decent discussion with them about it. But think about how the cultural aspects change within the organization, right through the organization. I like this. It says, waited 30 minutes and got no service, so went off. That's a great link in terms of bad customer service. Um, it's a really cool little thing. Always get feedback. Always accept the feedback. Doesn't mean the customer's king, because I don't believe in that. But it means that you have to think about some things in depth. How do we understand the culture? We look at to find the customer touch points. How do we deal with them? We have to view the culture from the customer's perspective. The people we're interacting with, not with whether we think we did a good job, whether they think you did a good job. And I want that to filter right the way through to back office employees too. Watch the video, you'll love the cultures. Culture is everywhere, so you can't hide. People will try to defend status quo, so we have to break it and change it. We have to show them what they're doing, we can't tell them. Change management helps, change management journey. Um, we looked at a bunch of firms and how that they change in terms of services. Um, do you understand some of what the literature says because we've been using it? So literature study interviews, cross case analysis, what helped? We're using Ho and Neely's matrix here, competitors, society, customers, environmental and finance, knowledge and information, products and activities, and organizational structures and cultures. We want to be able to understand all of these barriers and how they fit. If you understand these, then you've got a chance of actually changing the company. Bunch of firms, different locations. Um, detailed interview um, and a one pager produced on each one of them for benchmarking where we thought that they were and where they had come from. So we followed their journey. Um, where were they? Where did they go? And you could see how they had drifted. And I think everybody's drifting across to the right. Um, if you're in customer service, drifting down. If you're a product as a service, staying level. Lessons learned. Partner is a key, seat, key resource. Ecosystem view helps, but I need a mind shift to be able to take this. Competitors, not necessarily always competitors in every region. Think about how you might want to change. Think about how you could use these people. Society, can't always charge for services. So what can you charge for? Find out where to grab the money, how to capture that money. Local legal and tax issues can be a big issue. Um, we can get stuff stuck into um, import and then discover that we have to pay stuff. Um, try exporting a toolbox to Russia and hoping to get it home again. Very difficult. Customers. Um, training. We have to understand our customers better. Sounds obvious, but we really do. We have to live with them in service. Customers create a pull to help us move into services. They demand it. They also provide the opportunity for co-creation and co-delivery of services. 
the customer is more or as important as the technology. I think the customer is really critical here. We need to have to use customer pull to support the civilization challenge. Much, much more helpful they can be um, than you initially think. Finance, pricing is important. Get your prices right. How to charge for it? What's the revenue model? Um, senior management like to see new sales. So look at the revenue growth and the margin on it. And measure the impact on customer retention and margins. Much more subtle approach, but it will provide you some input to see whether you're actually achieving what you think you're achieving. Pricing, sales growth, margins and retention are critical success factors. So do map them out. Knowledge and information, project management skills. Services are processed, so you better be good at project management. Understand from the customer perspective how they create value. Understand the product service system that you're actually delivering. Sounds obvious, but not always do we know this. And internally, we need to share in knowledge better. Products and activities. One of my best things I have is the installed base is critical for supplying services on. So we should find ways to actually use that and, and gain benefit from it. Standardization supports professionalization. It's not standardization at lowest common denominator. And standardization can mean a lot of modularity. We build the service up from modules. Focus on services only once the product service system really is understood. Kind of chicken and egg there. Um, find out how the PSS works and deliver services that support the outcomes that are critical for the customers based around it. Something that's very interesting is that service supports new equipment sales. You like the service, chance of buying the product again is higher. Organizational structures, cultures, must have top management. If you haven't got top management, it won't work. You need a separate responsibility, so really a P&L. Service R&D needs, needs to address the whole equipment life cycle, not just the beginning of life phase. I mean the whole of the equipment life cycle, the asset life cycle, from before it's born to by the time you take it off and you recycle everything from it. HR needs to help us to change behaviors as well. They need to understand. They need to come with us. So conclusions on change management there is complicated. The model helps. All of the firms have contextual differences, but there were more similarities and differences. Not all journeys are the same, though. Not all markets are the same. Your starting points are different. Your end points could be different. It's a journey, and there's no single recipe. So we're doing more work on this. We need to identify really what servitization best practice is um, and use those tools and test them and understand the journeys with different start and end points. Closing. You know why culture is important. You can use the Matthew model because I tested you in uh, the class. You understand what good service culture looks like and you've got some experience now of how ch firms change the culture. You should be able to understand the cultural issues between services and manufacturing businesses. So you're well on your way to servitization. Thanks.